Okay, this morning we are uh, 3D printing a part for a pattern for our tool. Uh, I guess it's not a call a tool technically, it's a pattern. And uh, basically we're doing pie shaped sections and then I will have to glue all these together on a board. There's other pieces that go to it as well. And then um, this will be a pattern for sand casting. Also at the same time, I'll be doing uh, a wheel, a steering wheel. Uh, people have been asking for them because they end up cracking right here. Take a look at that. And the main reason is because they don't have a back gusset put into them. So I'm redesigning this wheel. This is an 8 inch. There's a bigger one. Uh, I think it's a 10 inch. But we're going to do the 8 inch because that's the most... Um, that's a vintage style. This one came off a vintage go-kart. So people want to keep their go-karts relatively similar as to what vintage was. Then we can supply them with a wheel that will have the proper gusseting and won't break again. Um, so uh, this wheel here is for a uh, Model T go-kart. This is going to be an aluminum wheel that we're going to cast. Um, lots of people have been asking me and the, the real issue is that the shrink is the proper rate on this. I mean, you lose over an eighth of an inch if you take a real, you take a rim and uh, try to use that as a pattern. You, with the proper shrink rate put into it, then the, the wheels, actually tires won't pop off. People have been complaining to me about that. Uh, the tires are popping off the rims. Well, it ha happens to be that either they got a a rim that's too small in diameter some of the plastic ones can be like that or they have got a, a, a low grade tire the tires are supposed to hold on but the other problem that you can run into is that if this is not the proper diameter to begin with let's say you took a casting and uh, you took a wheel and use it as a pattern you're gonna get the wrong shrink rate and the tires not gonna be right so as you can see there's a lot that goes into a wheel casting it's more than just throwing one on a board so we'll see you later okay so we've uh, gotten most of the rim done we have to basically and do the final finishing touches on it there's a bunch of other plates that go on the outside so that when we place it in a pattern it's locatable um, anyway so we've got that major portion done we've got the core We'll probably make another one and we'll make a mold for that and now i'm working on the new steering wheel um this one is uh an eight inch uh we'll probably eventually make a 10 inch but as you can see i've got some generous gussets on there and that should strengthen up the the uh, steering wheel tremendously so the next run on this is to start finishing out the rim that's a separate program we'll run because you can see this is only a six inch uh, print body print platform on here so anyway that being said we'll make the outside and then uh, glue that together and then from there we're going to make we'll obviously finish it off make it so it's presentable it looks like almost a real part and then we'll make a mold to go around that okay after that we will mold some um, foam and we're going to try uh, seeing how the foam works as far as a uh, lost foam process. Okay, as you can see we pretty much mimicked what's there and uh, so what we're going to do now is we'll wait for the outside, we'll glue that together as one big unit and then we'll bondo it to get it so that we can get the imperfections out and then paint it and get it glossy and that will make a really good final part that will look a lot like the, like that and then we can uh, loss foam that particular uh, make a foam make a mold a silicone mold from there okay today's the day actually yesterday I was going at a wedding all day so this is the material I got the kit I got a uh, a um, check. All right. The uh, furnace has finally come. The uh, forge, and um, unfortunately, 
one of the we weren't here when it was delivered so the burner part wasn't delivered but you can see most of it basically this is the furnace kit that we got um, I got the big I believe this is eight and then uh, we have a ten I bought some petrol bond you forget how much 50 pounds is but it's basically a little less than a cubic foot hopefully we'll have enough for my um, my big pour we may have to buy more but then here's the uh, I've taken all the packing tape away but here's the uh, actual furnace here in the box and uh, let me come back so here's the actual furnace um, it comes with the 10 10 in there which we will be using to full use and this stuff's kind of soft feeling the uh, thermal blanket and I would talk to the guys why they do that versus the uh, refractory liner material which is hard to cement kind of stuff and it was for transport it's easier to transport it with the soft stuff and um, should work a, about the same for what we're doing um, it looks like they put the furnace put the flame uh, port at the right angle so it's tangential that's important and they made it so that when you lift your lid you're not walking on it that's important too so uh, I'm pretty excited uh, there's a lot of stuff that came you know we got uh, the tongs we're gonna have to make our own that's just not gonna happen and then I got some borax and uh, obviously the hose and some gloves and some leather stuff all came with the kit so we'll be setting it up in the next couple of days pretty excited okay this is the pattern for the wheel that I've been working on and uh, believe it or not it's a, it's a lot tougher than what you think because there's draft and stuff as I was doing some reading I realized that you know you're not gonna be able to get these two sand molds together the way you got it set up you're gonna have to have some draft in there so I had to make some draft bits that I slapped in there it's not very good picture here and so essentially what I did is my core was square and I had to reprint make a core that had a draft on it and that'll make it so that when we put the thing together it's easier um, everything is backwards from what you think um, what we're looking at here essentially is how the core would sit into the mold it's it's hard to see because actually everything is backwards so uh, this impression will be flipped upside down in the sand and then this will set down inside there and uh, the, the next big thing is actually making the cores and I have some uh, tricks up my sleeve on how that's gonna happen and I think we'll, we'll be pleased with all what's happening okay uh, what we have here is a pattern that I'm putting together for um, uh, Model T steering wheel basically this is the original wheel and you can see there's a crack right there and the main reason for that is because it's just not uh, it's not designed to take the stresses very well so I designed up our own version and you can see that there's uh, gussets on the bottom to help transfer the load better and uh, this is the original design from the 1950s this particular one and so we're just duplicating that this particular one is eight inches in diameter and um, it came off of a model T go-kart that I have that is pretty old and uh, we're, we're upgrading it and so we're getting this will be a pattern and what I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to put that in silicone rubber and then we're going to make a special mold out of that and then we're going to use some foam it's the plan we're going to use some foam or we're going to, we can use lost wax one of the five 
to make the actual part that we're going to um, mold. So in the next couple of days we'll be making a silicone rubber mold for this and then casting in some materials. We'll see how that works. And it'll be our first dry run with the, uh, the forge. We got so busy making the tool we forgot to uh, document it. Basically we are pouring the one side this is the uh, steering wheel tool and uh, this is the one half and then we'll mold the other half in a day after this is uh, set to dry. It takes 24 hours. Okay so we're this is what the mold looks like uh, with just the bottom half so uh, today we will be pouring the top half of silicone rubber we'll throw on there and uh, that will be the mold that we'll use for putting in the foam. So basically we'll fill this mold up, it'll be a cavity, that'll be the steering wheel, and we'll fill that up with uh, the foam, and then hopefully when we put it in the sand cast, it will burn away when we put the aluminum in. Okay, so what we've got going on here is that we are We've made a silicone rubber mold of a steering wheel and uh, also at the same time we're making some patterns for a regular wheel for a Model T go-kart. Um, currently we do cast them um, but we're going to be casting them out of aluminum. So right now what I'm doing is I'm uh, 3D printing, it's hard to see, but I'm 3D printing some tooling for uh, some core parts that we're putting inside the the mold. So um, yeah, we've been pretty busy making parts, and our next go around is actually to make a cast aluminum wheel, and we'll start out simple with a cast aluminum steering wheel, which is a replacement for the ones that are in the field because they tend to crack. I don't know where that one is right now. I think it's out in the shop. But I have one that's cracked to show you. So we've increased the strength on the bottom of them and we put some ribs on them. So the idea is that it will look identical on top but it'll have more strength and trip and break. The initial one just didn't have enough strength uh, in that area and it would break. So people are looking for them. 